one. Here we go. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Debt Life with me, Chad Van Horn. Today's topic will be all about managing your family's finances, navigating a path through this pandemic into 2021. Uh, you know, we have Christmas coming up in a couple days. Merry Christmas to those celebrating. Happy New Year to uh, Happy Hanukkah. And whatever you're celebrating, I hope it's a beautiful time with you and your family. I'm really looking forward to getting together with my family, exchanging gifts, having dinner. Uh, I hope everybody has a safe and healthy uh, New Year's and uh, Christmas. Uh, so we had to change the script a little bit because we just had the $900 billion economic relief package come through. So I wanted to touch on that before we get into uh, dealing with the debt. As you may have heard, families under $75,000 or $150,000 joint are going to get $600 or $1,200. I uh, looked into it, mixed status families. That means if one has a social security number, the other doesn't. The one with the social security number still is able to receive the aid. Um, with this money, um, make sure that you're utilizing it for um, the most important purposes. As we've talked about before on the debt life, you always want to prioritize your payments. If you only have so much money, you can only pay so much so much of the debt or your bills that are out there. So obviously prioritize your, your electric bill, your rent, your, your water, and um, you know, push the, the credit cards down to the end of the list because they're the least important as far as they can't really take anything without filing a lawsuit. And um, you, you, need, you need to be able to have your, your power, water, and a place to stay. So uh, there is hope that maybe it's going to go up to $2,000. There has been discussion about it. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not that hopeful that that's going to happen. Uh, also, there was an increase in the SNAP benefits of $13 billion that, that certainly can help people that are unemployed and uh, unable to, to, uh, to afford food at this point. Um, some help for the unemployment benefits, they, they added the $300 a week unemployment benefit. So make sure that uh, you, you apply for unemployment if, if you are unemployed. Uh, the eviction moratorium has been extended for another month. I was very concerned about that in previous broadcasts. I, I think there is going to be a wave of evictions unless there is a way to wean people off of these evictions. Hopefully, uh, if you're getting into a better financial position that you're moving out of the pro property so that you don't go through the eviction, you can work with your landlord to make that happen and you leave the property in a broom swept condition and you move in, into another property. I know a lot of these leases are, are running out, so this isn't going to help hold over tenants, meaning if your lease ends at the end of the year, um, you still can get evicted. This is only for if you if your lease hasn't ended yet and you were negatively impacted by COVID, which many people will uh, obviously uh, qualify for that. Um, the payroll protection program is back, or the PPP loans. There's $20 billion to small business grants and, and $15 billion to live event venues. Um, more information is going to come out about that. If you got a previous payroll protection program loan, you're not disqualified from this one as well. And uh, make sure that you get with an accountant, an attorney, somebody, your bank, your banker, to see if your, your business is eligible to get those loans. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, one of the biggest issues that I've seen, and actually I was just uh, interviewed by the Sun Sentinel, uh, David Lyons, I uh, wrote a great report on this, that uh, there is a wave of repossessions in vehicles right now. Um, Many of the reasons are people are getting into really bad deals. Make sure that when you go to a dealership, you really understand what you're agreeing to. I, I had a client that agreed to a payment, put $4,000 down. They missed their first payment. The car was repossessed, all because they didn't understand how much the payment was or what the responsibility. And there's very little that we can do after the contract is signed to change the contract, especially on the first payment default. So just be very, very careful um, with those vehicles. I see too many people that come in, the vehicle's worth 10000 5000 15000 and they owe double on it. Um, once you get into that negative equity scenario, you just keep rolling negative equity into other vehicles, and, and then you never have a paid-off car. One of the best investments I think that you can make is, is a, an investment in a paid-off vehicle. 
Uh, most people that know me know that I, I have a Vespa that's been paid off for many years. We're going on our eighth anniversary together. Uh, it's very, very cheap on gas. Uh, it's cheap on insurance. Uh, luckily, I live close to where I work, so I'm not getting on 95 with it. But if you could get something that's reliable and affordable for you, it really could save you a lot of headaches because I'm having so many clients come in. I'm talking two or three a day that are having issues with vehicles. Um, if you are having an issue with your vehicle and, and, and you don't have great credit where you can refinance to a lower interest rate, there are different bankruptcy programs that we've discussed before, like the 722 Redemption, where if you owe twenty thousand, it's worth seven thousand. You can actually bring the bring the value or bring the loan down to current market value of the vehicle, and then pay that out off over time. The interest rates still are not fantastic, but it, it's better to have a bad interest rate on a lower principal amount than a good interest rate on you know triple the triple the value, triple the loan value. Um, also, you can do a Chapter Thirteen, which brings the interest rates down to five percent. If you've owned the car for 910 10 days, uh, you could actually also bring the amount down to current market value. So that, that really helps out a lot of people as well because it takes those 20% interest rates, brings you down to what's called the till rate, which is around 5% currently, and then you can work out a new payment plan. Um, obviously, with all of these, we need to make sure that we put a budget together where you can afford these payments. Um, we can work all the numbers that you want, but if you don't have the income coming in to afford it, then we, we need to start making cuts. And I know it's tough because we don't have the best public transportation system down here in South Florida. So if you don't have a vehicle, it's tough to get, get to and from work. Uh, hopefully, maybe there's employers out there that will uh, bring you on remotely and uh, we, can, we can cut out other payments that way. Uh, I have, I have clients every day that are asking me, can I, can I sell vehicles? You know, what, what can I do if I, if I owe rent? Um, you can certainly sell assets. Obviously, be careful when you sell the asset. If you, if you need your vehicle to get to work and you don't have alternative ways, uh, you could start taking an Uber and that could be much more expensive. Uh, but if you have an extra vehicle and you need to sell it, there, there's easy ways to do it. You can do a CarMax, you can do private sale, and you can use that money. But when you get that money, make sure you're utilizing it for necessities. Um, I see many people that they, they either get the, the government money, the $1,200 before, the $600 now, and it goes towards a credit card, it goes to Best Buy, it goes to Target, it goes to other things. With all this uncertainty, make sure you have an emergency fund. And I, I know that most people's emergency funds have been, have been utilized already and, and are tapped into. And there's only about 43% that, that have an emergency fund is uh, what one report that I read said. But the money that's coming in, you really want to make sure that your basic needs are covered, you and your family's basic needs are covered especially before uh, paying your credit cards or something like that. You know, many reasons why people pay the creditors or pay the credit cards is they're concerned about their credit, which you should be. I mean, credit is very, very important. Um, but the good thing about credit is as quickly as it goes away, goes down, it can come back. So don't operate out of fear by saying, oh, I got I to gotta keep my credit score high. What am I going to do? Um, and then you get yourself evicted or you're unable to afford food because you're you're keeping up with your credit cards. You really got to prioritize uh, where this money is going, especially um, when there's not a ton of it out there. There's not a lot of opportunities uh, to make money right now. So, um, if you have equity in in your home, I, I really don't like taking equity out of home to pay creditors, especially in the state of Florida, where generally speaking, your homestead is completely protected from collection. Um, if you can have a paid off home and a paid off vehicle, you are really in a, on a good way uh, to, to gaining wealth because um, you're not paying interest on interest on interest and you're, you're not paying somebody else's mortgage when you rent. Now, obviously that doesn't work for everybody. Some people, they, they move around um, because of their job or whatnot and it's not good to buy a house, sell, buy and sell um, because you lose out on the admin costs. But if you can, uh, obviously, get your get your house paid off, get your car paid off over years. That's that's the best thing that you can do. Um, if you do need to take money out of, out of your home, uh, I, I recommend talking to your bank about an equity line, and make sure you're using that once again for, for your needs. Don't necessarily use that for for your uh, creditors. Um, there's, they will certainly encourage you to do it because they know they can't touch the equity in your home, but don't fall for that. 
uh, make sure you speak to somebody that knows your options and, and knows what's best for you. Because once again, we're not done with the uncertainty of what's coming up. You know, thank God that the, the vaccine has come out and, you know, uh, people are taking it and hopefully this goes away very, very soon. But there's going to be a lot of changes over the next couple months and, and probably a couple years. So just be prepared. Be prepared for anything. Uh, at this point, it, I, I never thought I'd see a pandemic. Um, you know, thank God we were somewhat prepared to deal with this as a firm. And thank you for the leadership within the firm that helped with that. But we have no idea what 2021 is going to bring. Ho hopefully it's fantastic. Everything works out exactly as planned. Um, but just make sure that you're ready if, if it doesn't. So make sure that you have a backup plan for that. So um, let's go into uh, retirement accounts. If you have 401ks, you are eligible to take the money out under the CARES Act. Uh, I believe it's up to $100,000 without penalty. You will still pay income tax on it. So, so make sure you speak to an accountant um, or somebody that you trust that, that knows the ins and outs of that to understand how much you're going to have to withhold for the IRS. Um, once again, I don't love taking money out of the 401k. If you're doing it to survive, if you're doing it to feed your family, um, not lose your where, where you're living, 100%, I, I get that. You have to survive. But eventually, you want to retire, and that retirement account is for retirement. So try not to take money out unless you really, really have to, um, because it'll be hard to replenish. It's not just going to build up right away. So uh, once again, you can take money out of your 401k, but before you do it, definitely speak to your accountant, and, and please don't use it for debt. Um, use it for food, use it for water, electric, but once again, come up with priorities uh, for that. And, and, and use that as a, a last resort as well. I would actually use the 401k withdrawal before taking money out of the equity in my home. Um, once again, putting that hierarchy together. Uh, and the IRS has special rules with taking the money out. Basically, you have to be impacted by COVID-19. So it, it, it is a very low bar. Uh, if, if you were laid off, if you tested positive, if there were any financial consequences, uh, for child care or if you owned a business, then uh, then you're really eligible for that. So um, it's a very low bar in my opinion. So if, if you need the money, if you need it to survive, if you're struggling because of if you lost your job because of COVID or anything like that, um, you're, you're eligible to take it out. Uh, if there's any questions, please make sure that you uh, type it into the chat. I appreciate you guys taking the time today. Uh, I know for many people it's, it's a slow week. Um, we actually are taking off uh, tomorrow, uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the day after Christmas. And we'll probably do the same next year for New Year's because uh, we're all a little worn out. So we, I want to make sure that uh, my team has extra energy coming into 2021 because it's going to be a busy year. We have a lot of people that we're going to need to help. So let's talk about um, uh, other, other assets that you might have. Um, that you might be able to access and to take care of uh, your day-to-day -day needs or debts. Obviously, the stock market has been crazy. It's been up, it's been down, but generally speaking, it's been up. Uh, if, if you do have stocks that, that are not in a 401k and not exempt, um, you certainly can utilize those to help out with bills. Um, they are, when I say not exempt, uh, that means that if creditors come after you or if you file bankruptcy, they would be subject to turnover to the creditors. So I, I, rec I recommend using your non-exempt assets, the assets that can be taken, from taken by creditors before you start accessing your exempt creditors. Once again, for obvious reasons, if you ended up needing to go bankruptcy or uh, if you are getting sued, they cannot take the exempt assets. They can take the non-exempt assets. Um, I have many people that come in, unfortunately, that um, utilize exempt assets before they utilize the non-exempt assets, which doesn't make sense. And once again, a non-exempt asset would be cash in, cash in the bank, a vehicle, uh, your, your regular stock accounts, exempt assets, your homestead, uh, 401k or retirement accounts, pensions, uh, that social security, um, those type of assets. So use the non-exempt before you use the exempt uh, and, and feel free to utilize that. Uh, Jonathan, can a creditor take the money I withdraw from my 401k? That's actually a fantastic question. Um, 
when you have a 401k, you take the money out, make sure that it goes into a separate bank account. Because if you commingle it with non-exempt money, then it can become non-exempt as the full amount. So what I'd recommend doing is opening up a special bank account with your, with your bank. You can even, even label it 401k account, and then you can utilize that money, and then creditors are going to have a much more difficult time attaching that. And remember, creditors are, are very aggressive, and they have been very aggressive, especially in the past um, month or two. And they'll just claim things, and then you have to fight it. So the, the more that you can make it black and white and no gray areas, uh, the better off you're going to be. Cindy, is there an ideal amount that you should have in an emergency fund? Yes, as much as you possibly can. Um, but realistically, I, I, I would recommend at least three months worth of expenses. Uh, if you can get three months, look at what your uh, main expenses are, things that you have to pay or it's going to be really bad. I'd, I'd recommend getting three months out. You know, once again, this year has, has taught us that, uh, you know, to be prepared for everything, anything, and be flexible. So generally speaking, a rule of thumb, three months out, uh, the more that you can have it in there, the better. Obviously, uh, I, I, I still want you investing in your 401ks and your retirement accounts. So I don't want, want you to have a ton of cash on the sidelines, but, um, but certainly you want at least three months. Sonia, can my children's college funds be touched? Thanks for asking that question. Uh, it depends how they're set up. Set up. Uh, generally speaking, they can, cannot be touched. If you're just putting it in a savings account, they can. If it's Florida pre prepaid, uh, they cannot be touched. So it really depends on what kind of plan that you have set up. So uh, don't just put it in a savings account and label a college fund because that certainly will be taken. Also, if you open up a savings account in your minor child's name and you're putting money into that, that money is still yours. So uh, that can be taken as well. So make sure that it, it's a qualified uh, college fund and it's not just uh, your own personal savings. Uh, great question. Uh, Anna Lee, is a property and trust protected from creditors? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question as well. It really depends on what kind of trust is set up. Is it a self-settled trust where you're the beneficiary the answer of that would be no, you're, you're, you're not um, protected from that. The, uh, if, if it's a re irrevocable trust where you really don't have control over it, generally speaking, those are going to be exempt from creditors. So it really comes down to control. If you have control over it, um, the creditors, generally speaking, will be able to get to it. If you don't have control over it, it's more difficult. So, uh, Michael, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, do you recommend using the stimulus check to try and settle one of my credit cards, Lydia? Thank you for that. Uh, I would not. Um, that stimulus check really should be put into that emergency savings. Uh, you know, if the credit cards are coming after you, I, I would hold them off until you know that you're on a solid financial footing. So if you work in the uh, Purex or if you work in a job that you know you're going to be busy for, um, for the next couple of years and you know that you're not going to be cut back, then we can talk about settling and using some of that money to settle debt because it is good to get debt off your books if you can. But if you don't have that emergency fund set up, I'd put that $600 into emergency or emergency fund. And don't fall for all those uh, marketing gimmicks as well because you know uh, Best Buy, Target, all of them are going to come out and they're going to have $600 specials on that big screen TV, on the PS5 bundle or something like that. Um, just remember that this $600 might be really, really important to you in, in three months and uh, much more important than the resale value of that TV. Um, the PS5s are actually re reselling for pretty high right now, so it might be a good investment. But uh, no, in all seriousness, make sure that your baseline needs are taken care of before you start taking care, um, investing in luxury goods or purchasing luxury goods. Michael Sullivan can student loans be discharged and can PPP loans be seized? Student loans can be discharged, believe it or not. It's difficult, but they can. Um, and you need an undue hardship standard, which is a higher standard. And there's other ways to do it as well. Um, we, we do consultations every day with people that have those issues that we certainly can talk to. Uh, PPP loans, um, when you get the money in, uh, I, I would also keep that in a separate bank account that you don't owe money to. And once again, PPP loans are going to be for businesses. So just be very careful because they, the PPP loan, they're going to have a, uh, 
a security interest. When I say they, the SBA is going to have a security interest on the uh, on the amount and on your business. Um, but other creditors are going to try to get at that money. You know, whenever there's billions of dollars out there, you, you can believe that big creditors are going to try to get it. Uh, Lorraine, is there a danger in taking out lines of credit with a credit union? So. Uh, with with credit unions, be, be careful because what they do, generally speaking, what they do is they'll take out uh, a, a UCC one or a blanket lien over all of your assets. Um, so if you take out a, a, a loan with the credit uh, unions, they're going to be a secured loan, generally speaking, and that's written into the, on most of their documents. So if you default on it, they can just go into your bank account, uh, or they can even. Uh, repossess a car if they if they have a lien on the car so just be careful with that as well can irs take my stimulus and uh, best buy wants your money best buy of course wants your money um can the irs take take your stimulus stimulus that, that's more of a question for you michael but um, the way i read it is is no that they cannot intercept your your stimulus uh, i'm sure they can seize your bank account though because the irs has all-encompassing powers so um so if there's any other questions, make, you can always message me, email me, uh, call me at 954-637-0000. Go to vanhornlawgroup.com. Uh, my, my direct email is chad at cvhlawgroup.com. We have free consultations, weekday, weekends, taking off a long weekend after today. Uh, well earned, I, I think, for everybody on our team. I also have two books. Uh, we're actually giving away free for the holiday season, The Debt Life, which is personal experiences about uh, debt on our clients, and Bankruptcy in Florida, the ins and outs of bankruptcy in here. Thanks again for joining me during this episode of the Debt Life podcast. Uh, I hope you found the topic to be helpful and interesting. Uh, as always, come back, like us, uh, follow us, but most importantly, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and stay safe. Look forward to seeing you in 2021.